Dr. Tulani Dlamini, the CEO and President of the South African Medical Research Council, Professor Glenn de Grey, Directors General of the South African Government, Vice Chancellors and Principals of our partner universities in this project, CEOs of research institutions, members of the media in the United States and South Africa, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's announcement by the proudly South African Dr. Patrick Soon Shiong of the launch of a catalytic investment by Nantworks LLC in science and health innovation in South Africa. This investment, like the vaccines it will produce, is indeed a shot in the arm for human development, human capital and innovation in South Africa and our continent. We welcome you, Mr. President, and Dr. Soon Xiong, especially to this special occasion. We look forward to the announcement and the healthy future it will unlock. So you are all very welcome. I'd like immediately to invite Dr. Soon Xiong to join us in cyberspace and deliver his presentation from Los Angeles. Over to you, Doctor. Thank you, Mr. Seal. Uh, first of all, Mr. President and uh, honorable guests, thank you so much um, for this opportunity to present um, our plans for South Africa. And if I may, um, I have a few slides. Um, I think it would be the best way for me to demonstrate uh, what, what we plan to do, if I may start with the slides. Um, and today's launch to me is a historic moment in my life. Um, it's been a life dream uh, for us to look at technologies that we can bring back home. Um, I again want to thank the special guests. The next slide, uh, who you, whom you have announced, and specifically to thank uh, the amazing leadership of uh, President Ramaphosa and the ministers of higher education, science, and technology, ministers of health and trade, together with all the vice chancellors and the um, CEOs of Medical Research Council and the scientists who are all attending um, this um, event which has been long in the making. If I may, next slide, uh, give you a little bit of a history of from where I came. And um, I, I purposely did not show you where I stood in that picture because of my long hair. <laughs> but I was born in Quebec, um, Port Elizabeth, and uh, in the times of apartheid. And um, had the privilege at that time to be trained at um, at Wits. And on the right hand side, I think you understand the what I consider the giants of medicine, world class giants of medicine. And Professor Duplessis, Professor Tobias, who discovered the human, modern human, Professor uh, Duplessis, who really uh, pioneered gastric ulcers, uh, Professor Mayberg, who did kidney and liver transplant, Professor Seftel with infectious diseases, Professor Bothwell a pioneer in cancer, and Professor Barlow, which has a Barlow syndrome name around him. I think this epitomizes the strength of South Africa, um, the brilliance of the country that need to be self-reliant uh, during the times of apartheid. Next slide. I'd like to take you a little bit on the journey that I then took. Um, and in um, 1976 and 77, I was the first Chinese to be allowed to work in the Johannesburg General Hospital, the White Hospital, and then went to the TB clinics and realized that what I needed to do was to leave the country so that I could understand what was driving me then was to understand the human immune system. The beauty of the biologics of the immune system was a very, uh, untapped resource of humankind. So I went to British Columbia, uh, UBC, and we'll talk about that later because the natural killer cell was discovered there, NK92, and was fortunate then to go from there to UCLA and we then became a NASA scientist and a NIST scientist and UCLA scientist. And out of that work, basic work, understood stem cells, was part of the shuttle program and nanoparticles 
B.I. Coca convinced me that um, academia is not going to be the way in which I'm going to be able to scale and um, formed for me my first company. And I then formed American Pharmaceutical Partners. What that taught me was in this organization, which I ran for about 10 years, the need for scale. Uh, we had 150 FDA approved injectable drugs. We manufactured a million vials a day. In the 2007 heparin crisis, we were the source of heparin for the nation. And it showed me then then that uh, in times of crises and scale, unless you had scale, we could not practice medicine on a global scale. By 2005, we had developed a, this uh, first protein nanoparticle of Braxane and gotten approved for pancreatic cancer, breast cancer, and lung cancer. And this was the beginning of my journey in which I said, we needed to understand this immune system. This is but the beginning. And so for the next 10 years, um, we went underground, so to speak, and formed Nantworks to really understand this immune system. And the next slide will then show what I mean by this. And I think this slide is to try and explain 40 years of my life in one slide in which all of us have in our body this thing called the natural killer cell. This cell rose 1.5 billion years ago in invertebrates. And it's around in order for us to protect our human body from infection, from cancer. And if you see the slide, uh, the, the video on the left, this natural killer cell roams, activates, and finds a cancerous cell and kills it and quite literally dissolves it. We then adapted our human um, modernized system to create what we call adaptive cells. So we can create memory killer T cells on the right hand side and vertebrates like ourselves now have the combination and you'll see that video of that infected cell and a killer T cell roaming, but now taught to recognize an infected cell. The beauty of these two cells working together, I thought would be the NAND cancer vaccine, and there was an orchestrator. The orchestrator was this cell called the dendritic cell. But how do you teach this dendritic cell? Well, you can teach this dendritic cell with RNA, or you can teach this dendritic cell with DNA, or you can activate this dendritic cell with adjuvants. So the key and the secret was to find a way to bring all these technologies to bear simultaneously in the form of the NAND cancer vaccine and understand the harnessing of this immune system. It's taken me 40 plus years to barely understand, but really implement at global scale. The next slide. So that is the what. The next is the how. And if in fact we have this understanding and we can change the paradigms of care, whether it be for COVID, whether it be for TB, whether it be for HIV, whether it be for cancer and HPV, diseases, Burkitt's lymphoma that affect Africa, then we could actually transport this knowledge and leapfrog current standards of care. And that's the basis of today's announcement. The next slide. And how would we do that? I'm grateful for President Cyril Ramaphosa's leadership that has encouraged me to interact with all elements of his government starting with the CSIR, which is an amazing institution, the Council of Science and Industrial Research, as well as with the MRC uh, under Glenda Gray, and then harness truly the world-class talent of South Africa. I think, as I said, based on my own personal training and my current knowledge of what exists in this country, that under the 
University of Cape Town, University of Edwardsfront, Stellenbosch, KwaZulu-Natal, and elsewhere in the country, there is amazing scientific talent. So if we could harness that talent and integrate that into a global scale manufacturing, we could have access for all of Africa for advanced healthcare from the base of South Africa. That is the basis of today's uh, announcement. And I'd like to share with you a little bit of how we would plan to go about that. The next slide, please. Let me just speak about what Nantworks is. As I said, from 2010 to 2021, we went under quite literally a little skunk works and built this campus of close to 10 acres. And for a decade, quietly worked, if I could play this video, um, of this campus of one of the largest genomic centers in the country of doing a whole tumor you know, DNA, DNA and RNA for cancer tying a fiber infrastructure to the rest of the country like that of the Large Hadron Collider so that we can in generate supercomputing and understand with scientists at the highest level um, the issues of the immune system. So thus was born Nantworks. And what did we do as we did this? We began to realize that there was a need for three pillars of the company to embark upon. Next slide. And obviously the first pillar being the health and life sciences. And within health and life sciences, cancer is one of the really concerning issues, especially for Africa, as this non-infectious epidemic that is arising with a poor survival rate. And even in the United States, where high dose chemotherapy is the standard for care. And we launched then a genomics program to understand the cancer. It turns out that that same therapy is for infectious diseases in which we're treating TB, HIV, and then COVID occurred. But what was really clear was for this entity to take on the capacity of large scale biological manufacturing, automatic, automated bioengineering, robotics, and artificial intelligence, which then said what we really needed as well is the next generation infrastructure of fiber and connectivity so that we could create data centers that could move data terabytes a second so that we can end up with machine learning. And as you see the Zoom room that I'm playing on right now, um, together with Eric Yun, um, he started Zoom so we can have communications. And the connectivity and communication became an important tool, but it really highlighted the power, the need for power and water, which then brought us into solar-based technologies, next generation materials with regard to addressing issues as important as climate change. Obviously, uh, time does not permit me to go into these three pillars, but my view is that these three pillars with CSIR uh, and its mission could transform how uh, we look at uh, humanity, both as from healthcare, energy, and connectivity. I will try to focus now my attention uh, for the rest of the, the talk on the health and life sciences. The next slide. So let's go back to this quest. So for the last 10 years, quietly, our organization has taken on the responsibility of ensuring that we have the know-how and IP for every cellular therapy, whether it be stem cells or mesenchymal stem cells, whether it be natural killer cells, whether it be T cells, ensuring that we have the ability to manufacture mRNA and self-amplifying RNA and next generation RNA, make sure that we have the ability to, to deliver DNA, uh, whether it be in the second generation adenovirus, uh, that is different from the current ad fives and make sure that we have access and um, ability to manufacture every modernized adjuvant. If we did that as an organization and understood it, we have the ability, next slide, to deliver these um, technologies. Here's an example of what we did. I mentioned to you 
that I was at University of British Columbia. And in 1992, Dr. Hans Klingerman um, identified a patient that had a, a, a cancer of these natural killer cells and was able to get the rights to develop that natural killer cell in an unlimited supply and grow it like a healer cell line. But we could engineer this natural killer cell and target it to the breast cancer cell or target it to a prostate cancer cell or target it to a lung cancer. And under the microscope, this is time lapse. If you play the video, you will see how this natural killer cell, when targeted, could specifically go after this human breast cancer cell and within seven hours kill it. And on the right hand side, you will see how this natural killer cell, with which we are given God's gift, given us these cells. And we could now genetically engineer these cells by, by making them target just the tumor cell. And I believe this would transform cancer care. Next slide. And on that basis, we filed the patent and that just got issued um, July 27, 2021 on this NAN cancer vaccine. But the NAN cancer vaccine is a complex interplay of multiple molecules including the adenovirus, including the natural killer cells, including the yeast, including the mRNA, et cetera. And while um, IP is important, and I understand there's huge discussions about IP, what's more important is know-how. Next slide. Because the biological manufacturing process is complex. And this complex, as you could see from the video playing, biological manufacturing process uh, is large scale biological manufacturing process in which we took the risk of developing large scale bi biological manufacturing processes um, from the outset. The next slide. And what was important was to take billions of cells, quite literally, reduce them to single packets of units that could be cryopreserved and stored and transported anywhere in the world. And that these single units then are merely hung in the um, clinic to treat a cancer patient. Next slide. Well, what have we done uh, in the United States? So from 2017 to 2021, We've manufactured over 5 trillion cells. We've dosed over 1,300 doses, which represents over 2.7 trillion cells and zero cytokine storm. And quite literally, it is now hung for 30 minutes. Next slide. And what have we achieved as a consequence? Now these cryopreserved targeted NK cells are merely thawed and by uh, August 2017, we provided the first NK cell treatment in a metastatic cancer, pancreatic cancer patient. And I'm pleased to say that if our theory is correct, then this treatment should be agnostic to the tumor type. So we went from pancreas to breast to lung to head and neck, Merkel cell, and we found complete remissions in these cancers including bladder cancer, and said to ourselves, and we now have a platform that can truly change the paradigm of care. Next slide. So that was the plan on cancer, um, and we were well on our way treating that and actually starting our work on HIV when COVID hit. Um, so by January 2020, um, we had already done 150 patients in cancer using our adenovirus vaccine. And COVID hit and we realized we needed to pivot. And as everybody knows, um, the entire industry went after the spike protein um, based on the vaccines to generate antibodies to block the cell. So if you have then the infected cell and this, let's say, is your lung cell, and you generate an antibody against a spike protein, 
the goal is to block the entry of the virus. And that's important. But unfortunately, it does not prevent transmission because it does not kill this infected cell. And one way to kill this infected cell is for us to have a T cell, very much like I showed in cancer or an natural killer cell. And it turns out that when you have an antibody, uh, a vaccine against a nuclear capsid, you end up with a memory T cell that lasts for 17 years. This nuclear capsid is involved in the replication of the virus. So if you had a vaccine that had both S plus N, you would not only block the entry, but you would kill the infected cell. It is my belief that this is our path to stopping this pandemic. This is our path to stopping transmission. This is our path to overcoming all these mutants because the mutation occurs at this level, not as much as the inner level. So on that basis, next slide, we approached South Africa, we approached Medical Research Council, we approached the academic institutions, we approached the scientists, we approached SAPRA, and we launched the first Sasanki Boost trial, was to take our DNA T cell vaccine to boost healthcare workers. And I'm grateful uh, for, for, um, for that now, because we have, this is now active and completed phase one, we're into phase two. We, however, feel that the next two trials, which are pending, is if we took an RNA and a DNA T cell vaccine, you would have the best of all worlds. You'd have the antibodies, you'd have the T cells, and you'd generate memory. But because of raw material shortages, it's important to also have a orthogonal method of making RBD subunit proteins. And the ability to do that manufacturing either out of the yeast or plants and CSIR are experts in this. And then adding adjuvants. And next slide. So these trials, the next, what I call the next generation nucleic acid trial, the TEMBA-1 trial, is a mRNA vaccine plus a DNA vaccine. And the idea is you would generate antibodies and you generate T cells, but both to N and S. And now you'd have memory and you have neutralization. This paper just got published um, literally a few days ago in which Bada had supported us in the non-human primate studies during the warp speed in the United States, where we were able to show against a SARS-CoV-2 challenge in uh, non-human primates, a complete ab abolition of the viruses in the lungs and nose. So this proved that this second generation adenovirus, um, which is different from the current uh, ADVIVES, has the capability of completely protecting um, against, at least we believe, transmission. If you then add it to the RNA, which is very potent in stimulating antibodies. But if you look at the slide, you begin to see or maybe understand the complexity that you need to understand how to manufacture RNA. You need to understand how to ma manufacture adjuvants. You need to understand how to ma manufacture adenovirus. And happily, I'm happy here to report that we have large scale manufacturer and GMP scale of all of these three platforms. Next slide. But as I said, we partnered then with Bela and IDRI, where the yeast-based subunit protein of RBD, and you add that to an adjuvant, has now also shown activity in non-human primates. And I'm happy to say we've brought that in, and this can be manufactured either by yeast or by plants. Now you have orthogonal manufacturing methods and again, we have these methods. Next slide. And as I said, this is what we have now in the United States, both upstream and downstream. It is highly critical for the country to not just have downstream, 
manufacturing, but upstream manufacturing, know-how and self-sufficiency and capacity to lead Africa. Next slide. In order to implement this, we quickly created the Chan Soon Chung Institute for Medicine in July 2017 to implement what may be perceived as non-conventional treatment of not using high-dose chemotherapy, but to treat patients by activating the immune system. And we've done so. Next slide. So we are now set with this knowledge, technology, manufacturing capacity, proof of principle, proof of concept, multiple 25 phase two, three clinical trials in the United States to leapfrog the current standards of care. And it's my goal and hope that Africa uh, could really benefit from these technologies that I've learned. Next slide. And I'm grateful, uh, Mr. President, not only for your leadership, for bringing this together. And I'm grateful for the University of Cape Town, uh, for the Vice Chancellor, Mama Khete, and Linda Gale Becker and Graham Mankies, with whom I'm uh, participating. Uh, uh, Vice Chancellor Zeblon at the University of Advanced in uh, Shabir Madi, who's working with us, planning both an HPV cancer center, planning for TB, planning for uh, HIV, and planning for COVID both at the University of Cape Town and, and WITS. At the University of Stellenbosch and KwaZulu-Natal, together with um, Vice Chancellor uh, Willem uh, de Villiers and Tulio, Professor Tulio de Oliveira, we've established SERI so that we can do the genomic sequencing and be there in rapid response. I'm very grateful for Professor Glenda Gray um, of really taking a very strong leadership role in, in helping us um, guide us through these paths. And then uh, uh, Dr. Toloni and Dr. Rachel uh, at CSIR, with whom I've met uh, now, and I really believe this partnership will harness the world-class talent of South Africa. And then finally, next slide, I've touched clearly on health and life sciences there's no time, obviously, to talk about the energy and renewables and connectivity and communications. But I did want to have make one statement uh, of water. Next slide. Because water is the gift of life. And we have now developed this atmospheric driven drinking water utilizing the power of the sun in the video, as you see on the bottom, uses no power and literally deployed and drinking water um, at fresh pure drinking water. And we will be deploying this. In fact, I've already deployed this in Johannesburg, but throughout the country. Mr. President, I want to thank you um, for giving us this opportunity to present uh, our plans to, to come back to South Africa to present this work. And I thank you for this time. Thank you very much, Dr. Sun Xiong as a giant of medicine in your own right for your presentation and its promise of transforming our lives from the cellular level up. Thank you very much. I would now like to invite President Cyril Ramaphosa to deliver his response to Dr. Soon Chiong's vision for a healthier future for all of us and for transformation in many other domains of the human experience. Mr. President, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Tyrone. Um, Minister Nzimande, Minister of Higher Education and Science and Innovation, Dr. Patla, Minister of Health, Minister Patel, Minister of Trade, Industry and Competition. And of course, Dr. Patrick Son Xiong, the founder of Nantworks. And I also extend my greetings to Dr. Tulani Klamini, the CEO of uh, CSIR, and the President and CEO of the South African Medical Research Council, Professor Glenda Gray, 
directors general of the various departments in our government, and importantly, the university vice chancellors who are here with us tonight on this platform, the CEOs of research organizations and members of the media. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to begin by welcoming our son of Kabecha, Dr. Patrick Soon Xiong. I was very pleased, uh, Patrick, to see your Wikipedia entry describing you as a South African American with the South African part cited first. That to me truly confirmed your identity, your origin, your genesis, and everything about you. That first and foremost, you're a South African. And thereafter, I don't know what you are. You are a scientist. You are everything uh, that straddles this uh, globe. You're just amazing. And as you were outlining what uh, you've been doing for the last 40 years, I kept making notes because I want to have a dig at uh, Dr. Nzimande at the cabinet meetings to find out if he remembers all the things that you've been saying of a scientific nature. <laughs> We're very proud of you, <laughs> extremely proud of you. You have flown our flag high uh, globally, not just in the United States, but in the many corners of the globe where your company does business. You are setting a great example to our many countrymen and women who are living abroad. We regularly get contacted by professionals and may I say business people who are in the South African diaspora, who want to invest here, who want to contribute to the development of the country, who want to give back and who want to see their country prosper. Now, you have gone out to the world. It reminds me very much of uh, uh, a book that I read many years ago called Africa, the Biography of the Continent by John Reader. And in one of the portions, of, uh, one of the parts of that book, he talks about how humanity originated on the African continent and uh, a group of people then left. And they left and went out to colonize the whole world uh, over many thousands of years. And uh, the colonization that, and the, 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 the innovation that they displayed was driven by the talents that had evolved in Africa. Everything that they did from an innovation point of view, from a creativity point of view, had originated in this continent, the mother continent of the whole world. And when I look at you and hear you speak, I, that brings back John Reader's book to mind, that you are one of those South Africans who left our country to go do great things in the United States, and you were driven and propelled by the talent and the innovation that had originated in this continent, in this country that had given birth to you. So we are truly proud that uh, today you don't only see yourself as a South African American, but that you are coming back and bringing something back. You told me in conversation that you are going to bring your children back here, and, uh, uh, and because you are a South African, you want them to know that they are South Africans as well, much as they were born in the United States, and uh, that they should even have 
their South African citizenship back. I'd like to thank Dr. Nzimande because he led me to you. I thank him because today you are presenting something that is going to be amazing for us. Without a doubt, this initiative, which is going to be underpinned by investment, is a game changer for our country. Minister Nzimande and the team have worked tirelessly to ensure that a vision of this nature will become a reality. And I'm particularly pleased that you have worked with so many of our talented people universities and uh, university vice chancellors and various professors and our scientists and uh, more importantly with the CSIR as well as uh, uh, the Medical Research Council. Yesterday I participated in a global COVID-19 summit convened by President Biden of the United States. There were quite a number of uh, heads of states and various people from science and philanthropy. We discussed not just goals and targets for ending the current pandemic, but also what we need to do to prepare for the health emergencies of the future. In this respect, the investment and initiative by Ninth Works is, the most, is most timely for our fight against COVID-19 for infectious disease management, for cancer research and treatment, and for future pandemic preparedness. As the African continent, we've been bemoaning the fact that we have not been fully prepared for this pandemic from a number, a number of respects. Now, this is going to be, make us to be ahead of the curve. This is the third significant pharmaceutical production initiative and investment in South Africa to be announced this year. Three months ago, the World Bank, France, Germany, and the U.S. committed, and uh, President Biden spoke about it yesterday, as well as the uh, Director General of the World Health Organization. They have committed to invest over 10 billion rand into uh, Aspen Pharmacare to boost the production of COVID-19 vaccines, not only for our country, but for the African continent. The WHO also chose South Africa to host an MRA manufacturing hub with our own BioVac. Cumulatively, they will contribute to our collective ambition for the continent to manufacture 60% of its vaccine needs by 2040. It will also strengthen South Africa's pharmaceutical industry that is well established but disadvantaged because we still import <clears throat> a large proportion of products, particularly the active pharmaceutical ingredients, the APIs or the drug substances. The investment will have what you are going to do here. It's going to have a multiplier effect on several fronts. One, it will strengthen our capacity to clinically manage COVID-19 without any doubt. It will also embolden our capacity to clinically manage HIV AIDS and tuberculosis and all diseases with a heavy health burden. Now, South Africa has the highest COVID-19 caseload in Africa the largest number of people living with HIV and AIDS, and the massive TB problem. We do have current treatment programs for all these three, but COVID-19 has brought new challenges, not least of all resource constraints. The setting up <clears throat> of uh, clinical centers for excellence will contribute to quality improvement in managing these other diseases. It also bolsters our management of cancer, which you've spoken about extensively and done a lot of work in your research. The establishment of 
a cancer treatment and research center by North Africa at the University of the Witwatersrand comes at a time when the rates of cervical cancer are growing. The incidence <clears throat> rates of this particular cancer in South Africa is higher than the global average. Now through this initiative, we also hope to train more oncologists in both the academic and state sectors that can be deployed where they are needed most. The third aspect is that Dr. Sun Xiong has identified excellent institutions with the capacity and capabilities to spread their technologies beyond our borders. The Chen Sun Xiong Family Foundation is setting up the largest genomics facility on the African continent. This Center for Epidemic Response and Innovation will enable Africa to improve the treatment, the diagnosis, and the prevention of human diseases. Now, to put another cherry on the cake, the partnership between the CSIR and NENTHWORKS will build on the CSIR's excellent scientific capabilities to manufacture biologics and vaccines. NENTH Africa has invested in a biologic manufacturing facility in the Western Cape, and I look forward to the ribbon cutting ceremony in three months time, and I certainly will be there. And the fourth part is this investment and initiative will facilitate technology and skills transfer, something we as African countries have long been making a case for in the fight against COVID-19 in particular. This will provide more opportunities for broad-based black economic empowerment and more opportunities for young people. And through this partnership, we will be able to develop products and infrastructure for manufacturing and drive innovation. It is aligned with the CSIR's industrialization, which is focused strategy to create local technology intensive industries. Now, given that we import many of our pharmaceuticals, this initiative will definitely greatly strengthen our localization efforts, thereby growing local industries and sectors. And uh, this collaboration will also lead to job creation and mitigate our unemployment crisis. We welcome the opportunity to develop high-end skills and create high-end jobs. And this collaboration will also address challenges beyond the health area, such as water, desalinization, and as atmospheric production of water, as was said earlier. This will be critical, given that we are a water-stressed country. Now, the partnership will also focus on renewable energy and battery storage, as well as on the production of bioplastics and replacement for cement production. Now, the principle of self-reliance is at the heart of the African Union's Agenda 2063. The NANTHWORKS investment and initiative and the CSIR collaboration will bring us all the more closer to not only meeting this key aspiration, but to achieving a number of sustainable development goals by the end of the decade. Now, I have no doubt that this collaboration will place South Africa and Africa as a whole at the cutting edge of healthcare, of science, of technology, and innovation. Dr. Sun Xiong, you are to be commended for your confidence in your own countries and Africa's development. 
you have heeded the Tumamina call. Send me call. And for this we thank you. Thank you too to all who have been part of this launch. The Nantworks team in the United States, our team in the presidency and our partners at the CSIR, the ministers who've been so deeply involved in this, I thank you all, and also the South African Medical Research Council, and of course, our great performing universities and the scientist community of our country. This is a project, if I can call it that, that has a high level of collaboration. And this is what pleases me no end, that we are collaborating, we are working together, and together and working together we can take South Africa to higher levels. And Dr. Sun Xiong, I thank you for this. And I thank you for coming home and welcome home, son of South Africa. Thank you very much. Well, thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you very well, much, Mr. President, for you. Sorry, go ahead, Dr. Sun. Well, thank you, Mr. President, um, for those very kind words. I was worried when you start saying, you remember the book that you're reading, that you weren't going to say Rip Van Winkle book. <laughs> but I really believe uh, with everything you said and everything that is available in South Africa, that it could be, as we spoke about, it could be the Singapore of all of Africa. And that's the opportunity. Uh, I'm so excited to participate and thank you for your kind words. Thank you, Dr. Sun Xiong, for your compliment. And thank you, Mr. President, for uh, your warm welcome and endorsement of uh, Nantworks multidimensional and multi-sectoral investment in our country and continent. Uh, thank you very much, sir. I would now like to open the platform to representatives of the media in the United States and South Africa, whose uh, inquiries I'm sure will be very cellular, uh, Dr. Soon. Um, for the benefit of media, respondents in this session will include um, leadership of the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, the South African Medical Research Council, the Center for Epidemic Response and Innovation, as well as Vice Chancellors and Principals of the Partner Universities of Stellenbosch, Cape Town, KwaZulu Natal, and the Witwatersrand. Our panelists will also be available for interviews uh, after this interaction. Um, we are trying to manage the 90 minutes that we've set aside for this um, event. And may I just request um, as a matter of formality that as we engage, that we introduce ourselves fully by name, uh, designation and institution. Um, we hope to uh, get through roughly two rounds of three questions each. Um, as good hosts, we'd like to give the first opportunity to our media guests in the United States. So um, may we have questions from the other side of the Atlantic, please. Any takers? May I just check with our team in the US if we have anyone lined up? If not immediately, then I'll turn it over to uh, South African media who may be part of the session. Good evening and welcome.
Do I have any hands? There are some questions. Um, there are some questions in the chat. Maybe they don't know how to um, access it, but there is something from Catherine Child. Let's, uh, Hello. let's just turn to the chat. Catherine Child from Business Day in South Africa. Um, she's calling on Dr. Sun Xiong to provide some explanation on the water technology. Dr. Sun. Um, well, I, you know, in, in, interestingly enough, the water technology has already been deployed to some extent in Johannesburg in some of the schools. So Dr. Cody Friesen at the Arizona State University uh, was the developer of this technology. And I supported that organization together with Dr. Michael Crow, who was the president. Remarkable element of this technology is that now it actually literally extracts water from the air, even in um, dry conditions with no power. And the power is completely self-sufficient. And as you could see from this slide, um, the motor that is turning is powered by the sun. And it's basically distilled pure water. And the idea is to deploy these in places either at homes. Um, we're about to deploy 500 of these units in the Eastern Cape. It's been deployed in the Navajo Nation. Um, it's de deployed um, in places of arid conditions. And I think this changes um, the opportunity for people to have pure drinking water. Thank you, Dr. Sun Chiong. Um, I'd like to turn to Anthony Squazen of uh, Bloomberg, who's asking, can we get an idea of the total worth of the investment um, and some more detail on when cancer vaccines may be produced? So the value of the investment and detail on when cancer vaccines uh, are likely to be produced. Well, it's hard to put a number around the value. I think I've made it public that we committed to um, invest and um, support 3 billion Rand, if that's um, the beginning of what, what is, would be needed. Um, I think these platforms that cross from healthcare to um, climate change to interconnectivity span the entire process. With regard to the cancer vaccine, um, I think I'd like to ch transfer that question to the chancellors, uh, because we'll be working with the centers of excellence uh, in which we'll be bringing the natural killer cells and the IL-15 and methods of actually manufacturing that. Um, and I think we'll open that to the chancellors at UCT and at WITS maybe, and they would like to react to that. Um, Chancellor Fakan or Chancellor Vilakazi, would you like to react to, to to these cancer programs that we can bring as centers of excellence, both at UCT and, and, and at WITS? Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Sun uh, Xiong. I'm Zebran Vilakazi, the Vice Chancellor of uh, WITS. Uh, your alma mater. Uh, where you, you, you and Michelle met on the steps of the Great Hall. But uh, the key point here is that we have entered into an arrangement through the Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences, Shabe Madi, who uh, needs no introduction here to this audience, uh, to, among others, of course, uh, establish an institute that links both with cancer through our colleague, uh, Professor Yanza, and uh, 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 Professor Raf. Uh, who has worked closely with uh, uh, Dr. Pat uh, on the establishment of a one wing of a portion of an earth that we are trying to acquire, physical uh, building that we're in the process of trying to acquire in order to ensure that we do the right investment. The initial investment at this stage, of course, everything is still up in the air, but it is, you know, just to give it to scale, just of the order of 
uh, eight million and about six or seven million US dollars as a start, but obviously there's still some work to be done. So at this stage, uh, Dr. Pat, I don't think I'll give you the specificities because it's all dependent on the spatial and the kind of scientific needs of the community. But the first priority for us as university, as we pivot was establishing the chain from non-communicable disease, which we see as our priority and is a global uh, sub-Saharan African problem, and communicable disease as well uh, in the new institute that is led by Shabe. We hope to uh, scale it up to the right size. But at this stage, we had a level of just under 100 million rand to be scaled, depending on the, on the scientific needs. But I'm not an expert. Technically, I'm a physicist. I lead it to the uh, 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 biologist to give, you, to give me the right scale of the numbers. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Catherine Child of Business Day is back with us, um, asking us to explain if, if cancer vaccines are to be used in South Africa and Africa in the future, um, if they are developed here, um, and if they are successful in phase three trials. And then she asks, do we have the infrastructure to use such vaccines widely outside of the big cities one day? Well, again, uh, may, maybe I can ask um, uh, Vice Chancellor Mamacheti to, to react to that because we'll be working with uh, UCT, not only in the cancer vaccine, but areas like TB um, and extending into places like Kalisha and Kalisha hospitals where, where we've been working. Uh, Vice Chancellor, I'm going to throw that question to you. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Song Shong, and, and also for the question. Um, we, we, of course, whilst we are in the big city of Cape Town, we work and we've got facilities across the Cape Flats and in the townships. And, 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 and those are not satellites, uh, just satellites. I mean, in, in Kailicha Hospital, we've got a setup, a fully fledged setup there. And our, our um, uh, vaccinologist, place there working with the community. So our sense is that it will be possible to, to, um, to use such vaccines outside the big cities. I mean, if we can, if we can roll it out in the around Cape Town, we are confident that we'll be able to roll it out in other townships across the country. Um, and of course, I mean, I, I think at this moment, it's important to acknowledge really the confidence that placed on our scientists' abilities to, to, to manufacture vaccines in Africa, in, in South Africa. Um, oftentimes we, we as scientists in South Africa complain about um, uh, helicopter research with scientists coming to the country to do work and then go elsewhere to manufacture vaccines and then we buy them from them. I think this is a groundbreaking moment and we, we at UCT are really committed to making it happen and make sure that it reaches all the um, uh, impoverished communities around uh, South Africa, but also beyond South Africa into the continent. Thank you very much. Karen, I think you're muted. Thank you, Prof, for, uh, for that background. Um, Catherine is really earning a keep this evening. She asks, do we not need to improve primary care and do basic cancer diagnoses and even improve TB diagnoses as so many cases get missed? And shouldn't we do all of this before we do such high-tech science? We are we are actually leaders in TB research. I mean, um, it's not getting into this high tech science doesn't mean that we are overlooking um, uh, the basics such as TB research. I mean, we at, at UCT are leading in 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 um, uh, uh, TB research, uh, basically in lung lung uh, uh, research. So, so it's, you know, infectious diseases, we are one of the top 50 in the world in infectious diseases. The expertise is here uh, in, in Cape Town in particular. So, so we think we are ready. We believe that we are ready for this high tech science um, uh, because actually the infrastructure and the expertise that we've developed 
um, doing research um, on, on TB uh, and other infectious diseases it positions us very well to get into this high-tech science and be the hub for the continent. Um, so that's why I, I think this is an exciting moment rather than having our scientists go elsewhere to do this high-tech science. We've got uh, the expertise. Might, what we need is to manufacture. If I might jump in there, uh, Taron, please. I think, I think the... VC, just, VC just, just before you come in, uh, Vice Chancellor, may I just um, briefly say that uh, the one thing we haven't been able to do yet, uh, Dr. Soon Xiong, is to successfully reproduce our president. And, uh, and unfortunately, he has another engagement that he has to dash to. And so uh, I'm asking very kindly that we release him. Um, I don't know, Mr. President, if there's one last word you wanted to share before you take your leave of us, and then we'll come to you, uh, Professor Velikazi. I suspect the, I may have been taken, overtaken by events. Um, I was saying... No, I'd, I'd like uh, Professor Vilagazi to answer and then uh, I'll take my leave, but I'll say one or two words before I leave. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. I won't be long. Just a more broader response to Catherine Charles' question that Africa should always do with primary and uh, almost secondary care. I think we need to debunk that kind of way of thinking that all the abstract knowledge, the frontier knowledge must be in the global north. In order for us to reduce this global asymmetry of thought and origination and upstream thinking without ignoring the primary and downstream, we need, and as Professor as Dr. Petrum Sunshon said, we need to be also at the frontier of fundamental research, which is why this country has taken a moonshot of building the square kilometer array, participates in frontier level research, because all these things that are down at the coal face have a trickle effect that lead to innovation, spawning our new tech. So I think. We just cannot relegate Africa just to be at the backwash of all this frontier level thinking. The abstract, the, the, the luxury of contracting the hard problems are not for the rich, they are for the whole world. And I think that is something I want just to respond to Catherine about. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, VC. Mr. President. Yes, you are right uh, that we haven't yet found a way and maybe uh, Dr. Sun Xiong will come up with a way of reproducing presidents so that they are in many places all at one go. Uh, I, I, look, I look forward to that. <laughs> I, 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 have to, I have to be uh, on my way now to Limpopo, having come from the Eastern Cape and having gone to near Soweto, and now I'm here. But it's, it's really been a delight. Uh, I, I did say as we were at the starting... Uh, process of dealing with COVID-19 that whilst it's, it's, a, it's a devastating pandemic, it also presents us with a lot of opportunities. And uh, I di also did say that there's a silver lining below this cloud that hangs over the whole world and especially our own country. What it has really done is to get our scientists uh, to, to come to the fore, and they have played an incredible role. Uh, our scientists, and I can see some of them are on the platform, they continue to advise us uh, scientifically and in the medical uh, co advisory committee of Minister uh, Partha. And uh, now the silver lining for us is uh, this game-changing initiative, because this is going to change the game and not only for COVID, as I said, but for a whole number of other diseases. And uh, Dr. Sun Xiong, you're a game changer. And uh, you have really, really come up with uh, what our country and indeed our continent needed. And uh, you've, come to, you've come back home uh, uh, to a field that has a lot of scientists uh, who are working diligently and who are world class. You are the global class yourself and uh, you've got world class universities, world class scientists. 
And uh, we are truly blessed, if one can put it that way, uh, that we've got this talent that resides in this country. And I'd like to thank all the scientists on the platform. And once again, Patrick, you and I will be continuing to chat. But uh, tonight, you've really made uh, our day, or my day especially. And uh, it's, it's just fantastic uh, to have this moment with you. And thank you very much. And I apologize for having to depart now. But you and I will chat. Uh, you've got me on speed dial. I've also got you on speed dial. So we chat often. <laughs> okay. Well, happy, happy bride day tomorrow. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Stand tomorrow. Yes. Thank, thank you so much. Well, thank, thank you, Mr. Thank President. You, thank, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Mr. President, on that romantic note. <laughs> and uh, safe travels to uh, Limpopo. Um, on the chat, we... Um, We've had a comment from, uh, or a question from Hans van der Groenendal of uh, Engineer IT, uh, who is asking for a future opportunity to go into more detail on the communication and power arm of, uh, of Nantwerk's um, explorations. And, um, and I think we can give Hans the undertaking that uh, we'll put you in touch, Hans, with, uh, with Jen and the team um, at Nantwerk's, and uh, you'd be able to to pursue uh, this line of uh, inquiry with the company if, uh, if that's in order. Um, I don't have any new entries on the chat um, and I haven't seen any uh, fresh hands. Um, so I think we, we could perhaps look at, um, at wrapping up um, and someone's free to interrupt. Well, let me, if I may want, I really want to thank um, Professor Glenda Gray, who's really taken an amazing leadership of helping us coordinate. And if I may ask her to say a few words, but I really want to thank her um, for her incredible um, leadership here as well in, in this battle, uh, especially now in COVID. I'm really excited to, thanks. Thanks, Patrick. I've spent many conference calls for over 18 months with you, Saturday, Saturday, Saturday nights, Sunday nights, and dreaming um, a big dream for South Africa. So um, sometimes I didn't believe um, in your dreams, Patrick, and those nights seemed like we were just um, fantasizing. And I'm so excited and so, so glad that we can trans this, translate this into reality. And um, I think this is a, a great uh, move for South Africa and for the continent. And um, I'm ever grateful for working with you. And I look forward to many years of exciting opportunities, both for infectious diseases and cancer. Um, I know we can do this. And I know that um, there's enough vision um, in you and in South Africa to achieve all of this. So just really excited that this is all coming to fruition and that um, these went all pipe dreams. So welcome home, Patrick. Thank um, you. Thank welcome you. home. Thank you. Thank you, Glenda. Um, while we're at it, um, is there anyone else on the panel who would um, would perhaps like to to chip in before we move to uh, to a vote of thanks? If not, then um, then I think we we can begin to draw this to to a close. And it's a pleasure a pleasure for me to invite Dr. Phil. Mjuaha, our Director General of Science and Innovation, to pass a vote of thanks uh, this evening. Dr. Mjuaha. Yeah, thank you very much, Tyrone. Um, I'd like to start by expressing uh, our sincere thanks to the President. We know he had to leave. For his visionary leadership in this area of uh, vaccine development first, and then, of course, in the healthcare transformation in South Africa in general. We're all aware of his uh, statements and his vision around uh, vaccine equity or inequity, depending on how you look at this. Uh, he's been very vocal on this, and we are extremely grateful to his leadership uh, in this and focusing us 
on looking at what South Africa can do to try and address uh, this capability. So if you could, Tyrone, um, send our sincere thanks to the president for the time that he has taken and, and his leadership. We also have three uh, ministers, if I recall, unless I missed uh, one of them, Minister Zimande, uh, Minister of Higher Education, Science and Innovation, uh, Minister Joe Partler, Minister of Health, as well as uh, Minister uh, DTIC, Department of Trade, Industry and Competition. And in a platform where we serve um, to look at how South Africa can develop local manufacturing, the three of them have really pushed us as senior officials to make sure that this becomes a reality. So I'd like to thank the three of them, of course, individually, but collectively, because they have also ensured that on the research side and the technology side, there are appropriate investments. Minister Zimande, we are grateful for this. If it wasn't for the investments that the country had made in this area of science over a long period of time in the institutions that I think are part of this announcement, we wouldn't be able, I assume, Dr. Patrick Sun Xiong, to have you here because you would have gone elsewhere. So it is through those investments that we made that we are able to have this uh, tech transfer and this partnership um, that we are celebrating today. Minister Patel has been really interested in industrialization process and he has been very clear that the link between this vaccine manufacturing and reducing our imports in the healthcare is something that will drive the reindustrialization of the country to a slightly different level. So again, to Mr. Patel and for his leadership and him continuously asking us, where are you, D. Jim Chwaka, and the rest of the team on this? Uh, is there anything happening with Nantworks? So we uh, wish to say thank you to him. And then, of course, Minister Joe Patla, who have continu continuously said, when are we going to have our local vaccine or at least a bigger share uh, of uh, the active ingredients in the vaccines that we have in South Africa being produced. So uh, again, as I've said, we express our sincere thanks to the leadership of the three ministers. The institutions that have been identified and that have worked with yourself, Patrick, uh, the MRC, the CSIR as our science councils, and the universities of uh, KwaZulu-Natal, University of Cape Town, um, University of uh, Stellenbosch. Uh, we are all uh, grateful to the leadership demonstrated by the vice chancellors, but most importantly, the scientists that are working in these institutions. We know that sometimes when we in the department uh, demand a lot more from the scientists, they think that we are being unfair. So this is the time to celebrate uh, the pushing of some of the scientists to make sure that the science and the research that gets done do find it, it, itself into the marketplace. So we are grateful to both the leadership of the institutions that are here, as well as the scientists that have played a critical and an important role. Patrick, uh, I, I do know that we continue to have conversations beyond the health area, as you indicated in your presentation. I do know that the last conversation we had with you was in the area of uh, uh, using some technology uh, to uh, concentrate the sun in a tower so we can energy, clean energy in various parts of the country. But we are grateful for your persistence and for your willingness to have this, as you say, not only just the technology transfer, but the know-how that will build on the platforms that we have already invested in in the country so that we can leapfrog into the next generation of healthcare that is needed in South Africa, but is needed in the rest of the world. So we'll continue to work with you and you continue to have our full support with the ministers and the president to make sure that the vision that you have uh, becomes a reality. And then lastly, Tyrone, I do like to thank all the senior civil servants that are here. There are many. Uh, so the DG in the presidency with a team I've seen the team from the DSI and the team from the DHAT um, saying extremely 
uh, we're delighted for their support and they work behind the scenes and maybe not visible for the hard work that they do in making sure that these things happen. I've also seen some private sector partners uh, in, 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 uh, in this uh, meeting that have also joined and we are extremely grateful for the public-private partnership that is emerging uh, in this uh, um, relationship, specifically BioVac and other institutions that have joined uh, who see uh, the partnership with government and some of these research institutions as the way to take our work forward. And then uh, I would like uh, to lastly uh, express my thanks to you. I know when you are uh, facilitating such sessions, nobody ever thank you. So we thank you for handling this very, very well. And then of course, lastly, we wouldn't be able to do this if the media had not uh, uh, been presented to be able to uh, present it, if they were not here to help us to take this message uh, to the rest of the world and the rest of South Africa. Thank you very much. Back to you. Thank you very much. Dr. Mjoaha, for your thanks. Um, I think as we close, on the eve of Heritage Day, um, we are extremely grateful to you, Dr. Sun Xiong, for joining us uh, today as an icon of our national heritage and for endowing us with heritage of the future through the work um, you're doing in Nantworks. We thank you very much. Um, I want to thank our guests and panelists in the United States and in South Africa once more. And uh, all of us look forward to uh, realizing the work that has been started and to uh, changing life um, in Africa and in the world for the better. Thank you all very much and have a good evening. Thank you very much, Taran. Keep safe.